So this is interesting. What do you guys think of this angiogram? I'm going to go back to this image here. The first thing that we notice, and we knew this from the CTA, which is another reason why the CTA is so valuable, um, is that we have no obturator artery here. So uh, given, given that that's the case, it makes it a lot easier to visualize the anatomy. And so Puneet was showing me before how to do this. I'm going to go pull up processing, and I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to start drawing on the screen. This is our new Phillips room, so you can do all this fancy stuff here. This is the SVA right here, as we all can see, right? How do I zoom out? There we go. And we don't see the obturator. As we come down, we see the inferior glute here, and we see the pudendal. And if you look closely, it looks like the prostate artery, which is this vessel here, we're going to trace it all the way back, originates off the side of the pudendal, which is right here. At least that's what I think based on this image. Do we all agree? Definitely. So this is a classic yeah. type four origin, although it's a little angulated. So, you know, before we cannulate these, what I like to think about is which microcatheter would give us the best chance of cannulating this, which wire. And then obviously we want to, tr if we're using NBCA, we want to try to use, I like to try to use balloon occlusion whenever possible. It gives us a much deeper penetration, which we can talk about in a few minutes. The other thing that we're going to try to do, which we can do right now, is push the base catheter a little closer to the pudendal. We could probably almost even cannulate the pudendal with the, with the base catheter. I don't really have an issue cannulating these, these vessels, particularly the pudendal and the obturator with a base catheter. We could probably remove those, those marks, yeah. my, my John Madden marks there. There we go. So one of the things that I, that I, that I like to do is use this base, base catheter without a wire sometimes. And I'm just going to push it a little bit closer. So Puni had now a that great we, slide. Um, Sorry, Aaron. Yeah. I was going to say Puni no, had ahead. a great slide showing the escalation um, approach. So you're looking at this um, angio, and um, are you thinking that balloon occlusion is, are you still thinking that that's the way to I, go? Or are you yeah. concerned that you may not be able to track it into that very tortuous uh, prostatic origin? Can you turn coupling off, Debbie? I think we can get it in, no problem. Uh, so we're going to use the sniper, I think, to start on this side. And what's interesting about that CTA is it, you know, it didn't show in detail, but it did, it did show this origin. If you look, go back and look at it. So I'm not surprised that we have a type four here. Aaron, do you insist? Do you see the origin there? It looks like it might be in a different spot. I obliqued it a little bit more. Yeah. It might be coming off the, uh, inferior glute. Yeah. Inferior glute. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's not. I was a little little surprised that it was coming off that portion of the pudendal, which is not typically what we see. So you're right. I think it is coming off the glute. So that would make this a type five origin, not a type yeah. four, if that's the case. So did we you, prepped did the, you the, the sniper for these views. I, I don't know. Yeah. If, so uh, so Puneet mentioned this earlier. He said thirty degrees as a, as a place to start. Um, this is a forty five. Actually, no. This is a forty forty nine. Forty nine. So we obliqued it more. And, and, and so I'll usually start with cranial. 30. 10 cranial. Yeah. yeah, I think the majority of us are doing some 35 to 45 ipsy oblique on the side that we end up in and with a 10 cranial, like you said. 